One of the highly requested features we introduced in the Solstice 3.1 release is room scheduling via calendar integration. Now it's possible to associate any Solstice-enabled display with a calendar to put that information up on the display and in the apps for your users. It will display the time until it will next be in use, so there's no more running around if you want to have an impromptu meeting. You can check right in your Solstice app to see which room is going to be available. In order to enable calendar integration, all of your Solstice endpoints must have an Enterprise Edition license and be set to the modern welcome screen. Once these two criteria are met, there are three ways to get your calendar up on the screen. You can associate a Microsoft Exchange account, an Office 365 account, or use our Open Control API. So, highly useful feature, and we're all excited that it's publicly available. But the real question is, how do you set this up? Let's take a look. In the Solstice dashboard, select the pod you'd like to associate with an account and enable the calendar in the Calendar tab. Make sure Office 365 Online is selected as the calendar type. This does not require server information, just the user ID and password of the account's calendar to be shown on the display. If you use NTML authentication, you can change from basic to NTML authentication type and supply the appropriate domain here. Click Test Your Connection to try for success immediately, rather than just waiting for the display to update with the calendar information. If the chosen account has delegation or impersonation permissions, you can choose to show that calendar here too. If no delegation or impersonation account is provided, the user's personal calendar will be used. If you do provide delegation or impersonation information, that calendar will be used instead. Choose the correct privacy settings based on the calendar chosen and the location of the display. You may not want meeting names up in a public space, but might want them up in a private office. Now, after you click Apply, the next three meetings will be shown on the display. These will update, so as one meeting passes, the next meeting on your calendar will come up on the display. Using a Microsoft Exchange account is similar to using an Office 365 account. Select the single pod or multiple endpoints you want to associate with a personal account, enter your user ID and password, and you will also need to enter the server URL. If you don't know what that is, you can find it in the Account Settings section of Outlook. If that address says, for example, https colon slash slash mex06.emailedserver.com slash owa, you take the first bit, replace owa with ews, and append with exchange.asmx. You must complete this URL or the dashboard will report an error saying it's an invalid exchange server. You may choose to leave the associated display as your personal calendar, or again, add a delegation or impersonation account to display. As with any method, you may choose whether to show the meeting title and or meeting organizer and test your connection settings in real time before applying the changes to push the calendar to the display. After you click Apply, the screen will update to show the next three meetings on your Microsoft Exchange account. We recognize that not every organization uses Office 365 or Microsoft Exchange, and we plan to add more integrations in the future, but for now, you can use just about any third-party data using our Open Control API. For example, Google makes it very easy for you to run a quick script that extracts calendar data from a Google Calendar. Save that output to a text file, do a little bit of parsing, and you can use our Open Control API to send that data to your display. Most third-party calendaring and scheduling systems have a similar way for you to extract raw text data, which is why this is a good, fairly universal solution. To get your calendar information up on the display, you must provide a start and end time in epoch time, the meeting title, and the meeting organizer. All these key value pairs need to exist for the meeting to show up. The meeting ID you can provide for your reference, or if you're using the API through Exchange, it will create one for you. As of Solstice 3.3, you can also use the Open Control API to interact with an existing Microsoft Exchange calendar. After you've authenticated through the dashboard, you can use the API to add or remove calendar items from a Microsoft Exchange calendar. This works a little bit differently than what we just talked about, so be sure to check out the example scripts in the developer's corner. Solstice will display the next three meetings on your associated calendar. If you're using a pre-built Microsoft Exchange or Office 365 interface, Solstice will only display data for today by default. So if there's only one meeting scheduled for today, you only see one meeting, even if you have a few more tomorrow morning. If you use the API to directly populate calendar data, it will always show the next three meetings in your data set, even if they're not today. 
This can be confusing for users, so typically we recommend only showing meetings in the upcoming 12 hours on the display. There you have it, three ways to implement room scheduling via calendar integration. Whether you choose to leverage one of our pre-built interfaces or leverage your in-room technology using our third-party API, it's easy to get room availability information up on the display and in the user apps to make your meetings better. Mersive adds new capabilities like room scheduling frequently through our software upgrade program. So make sure you keep your Solstice maintenance up to date and stay tuned for the next release.